All right, so we were running our final animation test and we have it set to reset. That's what we did in the last video. And I sped up the timing of when the creatures drop. I think those work well. That last one I'm gonna, I think it, I think it will work. It will work fine. <laughs> I sped up that last one even a little bit more. Now when it's previewing in Photoshop like this, it's a little bit slower than it will be when it's outputted as a GIF. That's just because of the processing time with the millions of pixels. So now how do we actually save it as an online GIF animation? What we do, I'm going to hit tab. We keep the timeline. We can stop it. And from our stage file, make sure you save it, Command S. This is now your finished animation in Photoshop. Then you go to File, and you say, Export. So this is not File, Save As, because we are saving it as a, a web file for a legacy format of web page. Remember, GIFs are the oldest form of digital image. So when I export, I actually have to go to export, save for web legacy. And that's the only way I can get the animated script for the GIF options. If I say save as a GIF under the usual save as a copy or save as options, then it will only show me one layer. It won't show me the animation script. So this is how you embed the animation script into the file. Export, save for web legacy. You can see that it knows it's a GIF format. It's going to choose a selective choice. This is going to reduce your millions of pixels to 256 pixels. I can shrink the preview here so that it fits on the screen. And then I can play it. The quality, I like to choose the quality as bicubic smoother, but usually I just use all the other defaults. The maximum colors that you can have a GIF save is 256. You can have fewer, but you don't want fewer. <laughs> that's just worse quality. But that's the main way it saves memory is instead of millions of options of color, it only has 256 throughout the animation, not 256 per frame. So now if I play it through, you'll see how it looks a little grainy. And you'll see how fast the creatures come down because it doesn't have any processing delay anymore. And so then I can say save and I'm going to save it to my desktop and I'm going to call it Carl Assignment 3, not my stage anymore, this is my animation. To the desktop as a GIF, a GIF. You could say GIF if you like, like the person who coined the term, but it stands for Graphic Interchange Format. Now I'm going to check it. So before I close Photoshop, I'm going to find that GIF file. I'm going to mark it orange because it's an online format. It's the only online animation format. And then I'm going to right click and instead of opening it with preview, which is the default. So if I just double click it, it will open in the default image viewer and you just get a still image, but it will show the, the stack, the link of all these frames which with my arrow key I can play through. This is like the film strip, but it doesn't automatically play. GIFs are made to automatically play with a browser. So if I open it with a browser like Chrome, then it will automatically play with the uh, desired timing in Chrome. And if that seems really fast to you because the processing, processing delay is no longer there, then you can always just slow down your frames in your timeline in Photoshop. But I think that works pretty well. So now I can go to the assignment, scroll on the home page to assignments, go to assignment three and where we post it. And there are three things we need to post for this assignment. Our rough storyboard, our GIF animation at eight by eight inches, 
by roughly 100 pixels per inch. We did ours at 150 because we were using Photoshop. And so I'm going to add that in. This is required. So required GIF animation. I'm going to write here, though it's in the video, you export as web legacy in order to get this format with the animation script. Then I grab it, drag it in, shrink it down so it fits nicely in the window. It might take a little while for it to come in. If it doesn't come in at all, it's because you probably have over 100 frames and it might be too big for Canvas. And if that's the case, you just need to shrink your dimensions. But as long as it plays, then you're good. You're not out of memory in Canvas yet. Okay, so so far I have two of the three requirements. I have my rough storyboard sketch and I have my GIF animation. Next is our first layout project. And it's perfectly timed because we're doing this and learning how to lay out a clean, refined storyboard of nine choice images from our animation. And why is it a layout project? Well, because we need to base it on an exact dimension and be very precise with how things look. We need to learn that skill before we do our printing for the midterm because you're going to pick three projects to print for the midterm and layout is how you organize those on the page to print exactly the way you want. Photoshop is not a layout program. InDesign is, is typically Adobe's layout program. But we're not a graphic design class. We're not going to take the time it takes to learn InDesign. So we're going to use the layout tools that are within Photoshop. I have time now, so I'm going to introduce it quickly, but then I'll go over it again at the beginning of next class. So first thing I need to do is I want to be really organized, right? So this is my stage file. A way to be organized with digital work is not just to save it in one place in one format. Because we're using Photoshop, we can also convert this frame by frame timeline to a video timeline just by clicking in that corner. Right. You can go in between frame by frame, video. Once you're on the video timeline feed, you don't have to change anything. You go to the timeline options and then you can also save it as an MP4 file. So render it as a video. You will not turn this in. This is just for yourself and for your records. But what's nice about saving your animation as an MP4 video is then you can post it to social media. Then you can have it with millions of colors instead of glitchy and limited to only 256 colors. And then you want to make sure that that shows up as well. There it is. So I'm going to mark this with a different color than I usually use. This will be a gray format. And if I double click on that, it's going to play in QuickTime. But you need like an extra video player for it. And you can see how fast they drop, right, in full video frame rate. But it only plays once, right, unless you set it to loop in a playback. So if I was using this animation as like a gallery presentation of an animation, I would play it in QuickTime and I would have under the view options for it to loop. And then I just let it play and eventually that would, the little player would go away. So that's nice to have in your files. Let's move everything. I can close my stage now. And I'll go ahead and save it because I'll show you how to get out of that later. Okay, now I'm going to take all these things and I'm going to move my GIF, which goes online, and my MP4 file into my Assignment 3 folder. 
And now I'm going to go back to my stage that I just saved and open that with Photoshop. And then I'm going to show you how to make a refined timeline. And I'm not going to save this because I'll do it again in the next video, beginning of next class, because I don't want you to rush to finish it. First, I'm going to turn it back into a frame by frame animation. I'm going to take all 36 of my frames, select them all, drag them to the trash. But before I do that, actually, though it doesn't make a difference for me, it might for your animation, I'm going to go to my topmost layer and I'm going to click on the timeline options under frame by frame and I'm going to say flatten frames into layers. Now this matters for anyone who did in-betweens or did layer style effects or did what's called animating on the stage. So that flattens every, every frame you have into its own layer. And now those layers are called frames. Then I go back down to the layers underneath frame one and I delete all these layers. Delete. Then I take all the frames in the timeline, I drag them to the trash can, then I can close the timeline, I'm done with it. Right? Now I need to find my middle frame. And it's always good to use your sketch as a start. So my middle frame might be around, let's see, might be around here. Nope, that's too late. My middle frame is going to be maybe around here. Yeah, this is a good middle frame. So I'm going to mark that as my middle. I'll make it green. I know what my first frame is. Now I need to work up to that middle frame and I need four frames up into that middle frame. So here's one. Let's see the next one. Maybe is that one. So it goes one, two, then my third is this one. And then my fourth frame is just one of these. All right, so now I've got my chosen frames and I can delete the others. Because I only need a stack of nine frames. And then it's this one. And then what's after that? One like this. Then after that, it's like when all three of them appear. Oh, did I get rid of, no, here we go. that one. All right. And then maybe the last of those, this one, so I can get rid of these. Don't worry, I'll save this as my refined storyboard. And then this is the final frame. And there are some other ways we can do that, but I'll just show you that way. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine frames. Now what I need to do is make guides all around it. Just like I did for my assets. And I want to make sure it's cropped so that no layers are locked or smart objects and crop everything. And then I want to check my image size, make sure it's eight by eight inches by 150. Very good. Now what I'm able to do is go to my default colors. So black as my foreground, pure white as my background. Click on the, those little black and white square, you get to your defaults. 
And now I'm going to grow my canvas size. This is to make it print quality. And I'm going to make it 30 inches 